Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Wendell. I'm a product manager at Microsoft. Um, and today we're going to talk about how you can get started with SharePoint Embedded using our latest and greatest VS Code expansion. Now, if you haven't been introduced to SharePoint Embedded yet, it is a headless platform that lets you bring the power of SharePoint to your custom apps. By building your app storage on SharePoint Embedded, you get core enterprise storage, security and compliance, rich collaboration capabilities, and co-pilot powered experiences in your custom applications right out of the box. It's built into the platform. The innovation with SharePoint Embedded is the creation of a new content partition within an M365 tenant that sits next to SharePoint and OneDrive content, but it's separate and it's specific to your custom application. SharePoint Embedded apps use Microsoft Graph APIs to manage what we call file storage containers within M365 tenants. So your app's containers belong to your app and a tenant can make use of many of these SharePoint Embedded applications. So in fact, um, we are building our own first party Microsoft apps on this same platform. For example, if you've used Microsoft Loop before, it stores all of its content on SharePoint Embedded. A little bit of a deeper look into these things that we're calling file storage containers. It's actually like a headless SharePoint partition for your app. Um, each container, you can kind of think about it like a document library in SharePoint, although it's totally different, it's headless. Your app gets to control the experiences and has full control over those containers. Every container lives in a tenant and it is a scale unit. So containers effectively hold content. That's where you put your files and other content that you can manage through APIs and through the experiences of your custom applications. Containers are also uniquely permissioned. And so it's not just a scale unit, but there are security boundaries as well. So you can uniquely permission those to users, groups, and even external users. All right, I'm going to quickly cover like the recipe for how you can cook up your own SharePoint embedded application. Um, and then we're actually going to do it um, using the e easy way with the new SharePoint embedded VS Code extension that we've got. Um, so what are the ingredients that go into a SharePoint embedded app? Well, number one, you need an Azure Intra app registration. I bet most of you folks are familiar with that. You're going to need that, of course, in order to call graph APIs and, and do anything like that. Then you're gonna need a SharePoint embedded container type. So this is a new concept with SharePoint embedded. It's effectively um, creating a, a, an ownership relationship between your Entra app and all of the containers that your app will manage across all of the tenants. So you make one container type per application that you want worldwide. And then you register that container type, which is effectively installing it on any tenant that you want to use your app. And so. The directions with VS Code or PowerShell, you can create a container type with your Azure Enter app as the owner, and then you register that container type on M365 tenants. Um, any tenant that you want to use your custom application, you have to register that container type on them, and that includes your own tenant. So if I'm making an enterprise line of business app that I'm just writing for my own local tenant, you still have to register that container type there. And then once you do that, you can create storage containers. On, on that tenant um, and each tenant can have you know up to 100,000, that's just our current limit. Um, so up to 100,000 of these file storage containers in each tenant. And containers are effectively headless drives and graph. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like later. But within a container, you can use APIs to manage files and other content in there up to 25 terabytes of storage in each container. So we'll get into some demos, but before I do, uh, I just wanna make uh, a quick plug for two upcoming in-person events that we're hosting that you can attend to help accelerate your SharePoint Embedded journey. Um, these are completely free single day sessions where we're gonna deep dive on how you can get started and take advantage of the many capabilities built into the SharePoint Embedded platform, including how you can embed Copilot powered experiences into your custom applications. Myself and several other uh, members of the product group are going to be in New York on September 12th and on London and in London on September 26th. So if you're interested in SharePoint Embedded and learning more and accelerating your journey with SharePoint Embedded, um, you can register to join us at aka.ms slash SPE events. Okay, so 
Now we're going to get into a demo here. And for that, I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. Um, and so I do not yet have the extension installed. I just want to show you and, and how you can kind of follow that recipe that I that I went over in terms of like how you can set up your SharePoint embedded application and how the updated VS Code extension makes that makes that pretty straightforward and easy for you. So I'm going to go into uh, extensions in VS Code and I'm going to search for SharePoint embedded. And the first result that comes up should be here. So there's our SharePoint embedded for Visual Studio Code. I'm going to install that. With that installed, it pops this uh, SharePoint embedded SharePoint icon on the left activity pane. Now I'm going to sign into my account. And once I'm signed in, it's actually going to load all of my existing container types in the development pane. And so I already, in this tenant, have three container types. Now, I didn't cover any of the recipes, but there's kind of two different types of these. One is just standard or paid container types. This is where you know, SharePoint Embedded is a pay-as-you-go consumptive service, and so you, you pay for what you use. It's, it's dollar per gig and dollar per transaction, and there's some other charges as well that you can learn more about in our documentation. Um, but you can also get started for free with a free trial container type. And so that's what we're going we're gonna to create today. So if you have access to even, say, a developer tenant, I know we were talking about that earlier, you can go ahead and create a free trial container type. You don't need an Azure subscription. If you're setting up a standard or paid container type, you connect it to an Azure subscription, and all of the billing goes through Azure just like that. So with the new Visual Studio Code extension, um, creating free trial container types are is a, is a lot easier. So I do that, and I'm going to enter the display name. So I'll just say like free trial CT, and I'm going to make a new SharePoint embedded app for this. And so this will actually not only create the container type, but it's also going to make my Azure Intra app registration and configure it and set it up so that it's easy for it to use with SharePoint Embedded. And so it created my app registration in Azure Intra. It created the container type, as you can see. And now it's saying, would you like to register it on the local tenant? Um, I can skip that, but I'm going to register because I want to show you what it looks like to actually get it, get it there and create some containers. So I'll register on the local tenant. In order to do that, I have to grant admin consent. And so as the consuming tenant, so as the tenant where I'm installing this app on, I have to grant consent as you would expect. And that will let the app create and manage storage containers within it. So I'll open up the consent link. I'll sign in. And here I'm just giving access to selected file storage containers. Now, this allows the app to create and manage storage containers just for that app. I can't go see other containers or or OneDrive or SharePoint content with these permissions. Okay, so it takes a minute for that um, admin consent to actually propagate in Azure systems. Um, looks like it did. And now I'm gonna actually register the container type on my local tenant. Okay, so we created a container, we created an Azure app registration and we created a container type. We granted admin consent on the local tenant that we wanted to install that container type on. And then we actually register that container type. And so you can see here it is, our free trial container type. The trial expires in 30 days. Um, and then we're going to refresh this. And it looks like it's taking a second. There it goes. OK. So we have this owning app. So this is the Azure Intra app registration that we made. And here's the local tenant registration. So if I can open this up. Now we've got guest apps in here. This just allows you to grant other Entra apps. Could be owned by my same tenant or it could be owned by you know, the tenant that it's installed. And I can grant other Entra apps access to the containers on this tenant. Um, and as well, just I've got some containers and recycled containers. And so like I said, containers are effectively like kind of like SharePoint document libraries, but they're headless. Um, another way to think about it is their drives in Microsoft Drive. And so we can go like this. We can actually load the containers that we have. And because of the brand new container type, we don't have any. So I'm going to create a container. I'll just say my container. All right. And it should be you know, creating one of those brand new file storage containers um, in this tenant that I installed. In. So here's my container. Awesome. 
Um, there's a lot more you can do with this updated Visual Studio Code extension, some of the things that I want to show you. So um, it gives you better control over you know, the container type, basic things that you'd expect to be able to rename and delete it. You can copy the container type ID and other properties and stuff like that. Now, also within this owning application, you can run sample apps. And so if you click one of these options, it will actually pull down uh, one of these sample applications from our GitHub, open source GitHub repo, and it will inject all of the configuration parameters associated with your container type into a file in that, in that cloned version of that repo. And then you can immediately just run that sample app right here on your local developer machine. So it's pretty handy to get started with a few clicks. You're running one of our sample apps. Um, you can actually kind of manage your credentials and permissions here and view the app in Azure. What you can also do is set up and run the Postman collection. And that's what I want to show you here. So you can actually just kind of copy the environment settings uh, for Postman. Um, so uh, here I actually don't yet have um, a client secret for my Azure Entra uh, app registration. So I'm going to make a secret for this. Um, and then it's actually going to put all of the Postman environment settings onto my clipboard. And so that makes it really easy. So now I can go up into Postman and I can import this um, Postman environment that's specific to my SharePoint embedded app. All I have to do is paste that in there. And now you can see I have this free trial container type with that new Azure Enter app registration that we made. New container type. Here's all of the other details as well as some credentials that I can use to access. All right. So now I'm going to go into uh, collections. And this is where, if you haven't set up Postman yet, you can uh, download our SharePoint embedded Postman collection. To do that, all you have to do is go to HTTPS, aka.ms, slash SPE dash Postman. Once you do that, it should also import that Postman collection directly from our open source GitHub repo. So I can expand that. Within the SharePoint Embedded Postman collection, there are two folders. Because this is using graph APIs, using standard you know, Microsoft identity and sign-in, I can access that with either app-only authentication or delegated authentication where I have an app plus a user. Um, we can go into app-only, and I'm going to get um, an access token for app-only. So let's just give that a shot. I might have some cache credentials, there it goes. All right, so I've got an app-only access token, and I can go to the list containers endpoint in here. So you can see it's on graph, um, and then it's the file storage containers endpoint, and I'm passing in the container type ID. So this gets me all the containers owned by my app. Now, because I'm passing app-only permissions and I created that container in front of you uh, within VS Code using app-only credentials, here it is. If I go now into the delegated folder, I'm going to actually sign in. And so you can access these APIs uh, with app only or delegated. I'm going to go in uh, with delegated off and approve um, these delegated uh, scopes. OK, pretty straightforward. I've got myself a token. And I have the same set of APIs just for delegated now. And so I can list containers. But what you'll notice here is that I don't see that container because I don't have permissions to it. As I mentioned, each container is uniquely permissioned. And that one that we created with app only off, by default, it doesn't have any humans assigned to it. And so when I come in with a delegated token, this user does not have access to that container. So I can create a container now. Um, and that's a really straightforward post request to this endpoint. And the body of that, we just pass it a display name, a description, and that container type ID. I'll send it off. And we have our second file storage container in here. Now. One thing I want to do now is I told you that containers are pretty much just drives in Microsoft Graph. If I go over to the existing Graph Drive API endpoint, I can actually pass in the container ID of the container that we just created and get that container back as a drive object from Microsoft Graph. So it literally is a Graph Drive. And if you have a whole bunch of existing code that interacts with drives and drive items using the Graph APIs, that should just work. It's the same interaction model, which is really handy. Um, for example, we're going to upload a file here. And so I'm going to um, put in, let's grab a Word document from my local machine. So I've got this add slogans document. 
And I'm going to put that in as a binary request. And I just need to give it a name in this uh, REST call here. So add slogans docx, pass in the binary. And there we go. We have our first file in this drive, which is actually a SharePoint embedded file storage container. Now, because this is an Office document, I can actually show you quickly some of the collaboration capabilities that we have built in to the SharePoint embedded platform. So when you have a drive item in a, in a drive and graph, it has a web URL property. If I actually open up, uh, browser window and paste that, which your your custom application can navigate directly to this link. This is how you can embed uh, rich collaboration and co-authoring experiences from Office directly into your custom application. So you can see I can open up this file in Office, and here I can co-author, at mention, and comment, and interact, and use you know the Office experiences as as you've all come to expect. From, from other existing M365 experiences like OneDrive and SharePoint, you can bring that into your own custom application.